Hello, my name is Leo, and welcome to another reading of the Elder Scrolls. Today we'll be reading A Brief History of the Empire, Part 4, by Storak Kathrogj III, Imperial Historian. This is the fourth and final volume in this series. Let us begin. Oh, before we do get started on today's reading, I would like to point out that I have made a playlist on my channel for where you can look at all or listen to all of the readings that we have done thus far, and of course future readings will also be put into that playlist. So, you're welcome. The first book of this series described in brief, the first eight emperors of the... God, this is exactly what it said in the last book, I know. The first eight emperors of the Tiber of the Septim Dynasty, beginning with Tiber Faust. The second volume described the world of diamond, world of the red diamond, and the six emperors who followed. The third volume describes the troubles of the next three emperors: the frustrated Uriel the fourth, the ineffectual Sephiroth the second, and the heroic Uriel the fifth. At Uriel the fifth's death, across the sea in distant hostile Akavar, Uriel the sixth was but five years old. In fact, Uriel the Sixth was born only shortly before his father left for Akava. Uriel the Fifth's only other progeny, by a different woman, were the twins Moathia and Elsia, Elosia, who had been born a month after Uriel the Fifth left. Uriel the Fourth was coronated in the 290th year of the Third Era, the consort Thronikia, <clears throat> as the boy's mother was given, hmm? the consort Thronikia, oh, as the boy's mother was given a restricted regency until Uriel the Fourth, the sixth, sorry, reached his minority. The council retained the real power, as they had ever since the days of Kitariah the First. The council so enjoyed its unlimited and unrest unrestricted freedom to make laws and prophets, Uriel the Sixth was not given full license to rule until 307, when he was 22 years old. Gee, that's late. He had been slowly assuming positions of responsibility for years, but both the council and his mother, who enjoyed even her limited regency, were loath to give him reign. By the time he came to the throne, the mechan the mech the machinations—it's not machinations, is it? Mechanic. Hang on, I'm gonna check. I guess it was just straight up mechanism. <laughs> I don't know why I was reading it funny, but yeah, it's just mechanism. Anyway. The mechanisms of government gave him little power, but the power to veto. This power he regularly ex exercised. What a dick. By 313, Uriel VI could boast with conviction that he truly did rule Tamriel. He utilized defunct spy networks and guard units to bully and coerce the difficult members of the Elder Council. His sister was his unusual ally after her ma a marriage to Baron Yulf Garrison of Winterhold brought her considerable wealth and influence, as the sage Ungaraj said. Uriel V conquered Elisgiet, but Uriel VI conquered the, conquered the Elder Council. When Uriel VI fell from his horse and could not be saved, by the finest imperial heels, his beloved sister, Marie Hatha, took the throne. At 25 years of age, she had been described by, admittedly self-serving, diplomats, as the most beautiful creature in Tamriel. She was certainly well learned. The vac mm. okay, really to... okay, I thought that's what it was. Vivacious, yeah. She was well-learned, well vivacious, athletic, and a well-practiced politician. 
she brought the Archmajor of Skyrim to the Imperial City and created the Second Imperial Battle Mage. Since the days of... Oh, oh, since the days of Time of Center. Oh, she didn't, no, they didn't have a Battle Mage before then. Oh. Well, was the whole downfall of fucking the plot of Arena was the fact that uh, Uriel the Seventh had a battle mage and he betrayed her, betrayed him, or whatever. Also, vivacious for your, those who are interested, especially of a woman, attractively lively and animated. Also, there's this weird thing going on at the bottom of the screen, but I found out that it actually loops over here. Challenge since the days of her grandfather. Challenge since the days of her grandfather. So, it's fine. <clears throat> anyway, where were we? Right. Morihatha uh, finished the job her brother had begun and made the Imperial Province truly a government under the Empress. Outside the Imperial Province, however, the Empire had been slowly disintegrating. Open re revulsions... Re revolutions, sorry. No? Hmm? No, it's revulsions. Open revulsions and civil wars have raged unchallenged since the days of her grandfather, Sephiroth the Second. Carefully coordinating her counterattacks, Mori Hatha uh, slowly took back her rebellious vassals, always avoiding overextending herself. Though Mori Hatha's military com campaigns were remarkably successful, the council was often frustrated by her deliberate pace. One councilman, an Argonian named Thericles Romulus, Furious on her refusal to send troops to his troubled lands, is believed to be the man who hired the assassins who claimed her life in Third Era 339. Rom Romus, who hired the... No, Romus, was tried and executed, uh, though he protested his innocence. Mori Hatha had no surviving children, and Elosia had died of a fever four years before. Elosia's 24-year-old, 25-year-old son, Pelagius, was crowned Pelagius IV. Pelagius IV continued his aunt's work, slowly bringing back the sedacious kingdoms of his empire. He had Morihatha's patience and deliberate pace in his endeavours, but alas, he did not have her success. The kingdoms had been free of constraints for so long, even a benign imperial pre presence was odious. Nevertheless, when Pelagius died after an astonishing 49 year reign, Tamriel was closer to unity than it had been since the days of Uriel I. Our current emperor, his awesome and terrible majesty, Uriel Septim VII, son of Pelagius IV, has the allegiance of the great aunt Mori Hatha. I wanted to say the all his awesome and terrible majesty Uriel Septim the fourth the seventh son of Pelagius uh, king of the Andals and the first men and lord of Westeros uh, the political skill of his great uncle Uriel Sex six and the military prowess of his great great uncle Uriel the fifth Great grand uncle, sorry. For 29 years he reigned and brought. Wait, who? To me, Yuri the Seven? Yeah. Okay. Why, why are we using past tense here? He's still alive, but whatever. Hmm. Oh, they're talking about. They might be talking about Jagathan. Well, they are talking about Jagathan. Okay. Right, anyway. <clears throat> Twenty-one years he reigned and brought justice and order to Tamriel. In the year Third Era, three hundred and eighty-nine, yeah, that's Arena. His Imperial Battle Mage Jagathan betrayed him. Uriel the Seventh was imprisoned in a dimension of Than's creation. Wait, a dimension of Than's creation? I thought it was Oblivion. Uh, and Than used his magic of illusion to assume the Emperor's aspect. For the next ten years. Ten years? Well, to be fair, the game doesn't start 
I thought the game started at 389. I'll have to look it up. Um, anyway. Uh, for the next 10 years, Dion used Imperial privileges, but did not continue Uriel VII's schedule of reconquest. It is not entirely known yet what Thaun's goals and personal accomplishments were, accomplishments were during the ten years he imitated his liege lord. In Third Era 399, a mysterious champion defeated the Battle Mage. Actually, it might have been later than that. Maybe the game starts 399. The mysterious champion defeated the Battle Mage in the dungeons of the Imperial Palace and freed Uriel the Seventh from his other dimension cell. Since, he since his release, Uriel the Seventh has worked diligently to renew, renew the battle to reunite Tamriel. Thaun's interference broke the momentum, but the years since then have proven that the glorious golden age of Tiber Septum may be visited on Tamriel once again. I do want to look that shit up though. Um, do you want to just look it up now? I know. Oh, I'm gonna pause and look at look it up. Okay. Okay, so I looked it up, and yeah, we did start. We started Arena in 389, was when the game started, and uh, I actually killed him in 394, not 399. So. He didn't actually last as long as this book seems to tell. Yeah, I am awesome. But that was a brief history of the Empire, parts 1, 2, 3, and today 4. But tomorrow we should finally get back. Wait, where are we going again? Are we going to Wayrest? Yes, yes, we are. So we should finally get back to Wayrest. And uh, get back to doing um, Major's Guild missions. Yeah, alright. That was, that, was, that was quite the detour from our Mages Guild missions, I'll tell you what. Uh, alright, so I'll see you guys then. Um, but for now, my name is Leo, and I'll see you next time.